I want to go over the um, seventh book of Plato's Re Republic. Um, now I have a video for each of the books of the Republic from one through six, and I plan on finishing because there's ten books, and um, this is number seven, so that means I got four more, uh, including this one. And uh, I would like to finish these up so that I can get to um, some uh, dialogues. Like I would like to do maybe the um, the uh, Phaedo and the Phaedrus, which would be which would, would be some really good ones, I think. Because I think those two um, dialogues are, are some things that people um, have to read for either their intro classes or for their history of or of uh, ancient or ancient philosophy classes. And so I'd, I'd like to get into some of those different different uh, dialogues. Anyway, um, book six, which I do have a video of. I have a playlist. Which, I have a playlist on this on this channel, which is called Plato's Philosophy, and I have. Uh, not only some of the other videos I have about, about Plato's philosophy, but also the books one through uh, six other videos in there, which are um, books one through six um, of his of his Re Republic. And this video is number seven, but in the book six we have the analogy of the sun and the analogy of the of the uh, divided line. Now the sun, just like the sun. Um, here in the visible realm, gives light to to everything in the world. So, so the sun is the source of our seeing of our seeing anything in in the world. Um, the way of seeing um, other forms in the intelligible realm um, is the form of the good, which is the highest, the highest. Um, now, the divided line. Um, lines up with the analogy of the cave. Now in book 7 we have the analogy of the cave which is what I'm going to discuss here. Uh, we have the um, imagination and belief which are in the visible realm and then we have uh, thought and understanding which are the which are in the in the intelligible realm. So um, if you haven't seen the, like the picture that, that they have of the uh, analogy of the cave that is that is helpful if you if you haven't taken a class or you've been taught this and you just want to want to know about it and you haven't seen the picture the picture helps you understand what's going on in this um in this analogy now I, i'm going to talk about it and everything but it helps if you just see it so just like we have the four th things in the line we have four things in the cave um so we have first imagination. Now this is just about knowledge. It's about um, different levels of knowledge. Uh, just like in the line, we, you know, we had different levels of knowledge. Now this is this is basically in the Republic, which is what I've discussed, I've basically kind of given you a bit of a synopsis, you know, so you can kind of understand what's, what's going on in this dialogue. In um, the first dialogues, I mean, in the first, in you know, in this whole thing, in, in the in the Republic, what's going on is, uh, at first, Socrates is being said, "Hey, what is what is justice?" and he tries to give it, but he's like, "Well, let me figure out what it is on the citywide or the larger scale. Um, then we can figure out what it is on the um, individual scale." So he kind of conjures up this city or this re re Republic. Um, which is, you know, we not only have a metaphysical thing going on here, and we have a epistemological thing going on here, which I've discussed in the other in the other in the other videos. Um, but we have a ethical also. We have a political thing going on, which is like a way in which a society should be run, and which it should be administered. Um, ad administrate probably. Um, so, the way that we get to this conversation about the sun and the line in the cave is uh, we we in books five, five and six we kind of come to the issue of what is like how should we 
who should who should rule? Um, and he gives class different classes of people and such. And we have the guardians, which you know um, I've talked about. But then we have this classical, you know, icon of the philosopher king. And we then we have this you know idea of how should a philosopher king be chosen? And um, you know that's also discussed in book eight um, as to how that that should be chosen and what you know all this stuff. Um, but among the guardians, the philosopher's king is chosen. But the philosopher king who aligns himself with the forms and who he has the most knowledge. I guess that's kind of a not really good way of putting it, but that's how it's going. It's kind of the way you know um, the one who lines himself um, or you know directs himself most to the to, to the form of the good and also the rest of the forms is the one who has the most knowledge and is of right nature um, so that that's that's how we get to the com to the idea of the sun and the line in the cave so first we have you know like, like I said we have the imagination and uh, belief and we have um, thought and understanding in these two different realms. So in the visible realm, we have the imagination. Now this is a very low level of knowledge, and the what is given here is um, a bunch of people that are bound, they're chained, and um, they are um, they are in this cave. Now again, I want you to see to see to see the picture if if you haven't. Um, there's these people that are chained together, and they're bound to face away from the from the entrance of of the cave. Um, they are to face one way. Uh, they can't look any other way except a certain way. And behind them, we have statues, and we have a fire which casts a shadow on the wall that they're facing. And these people these people manipulate the statues or the figures and that's they see that these shadows that are that are moving around and that's all they that's all they know that's all they know at all um that's how they that's that's the that's the reality that they have and that's all they know so that is imagination in that it's a very low level of knowledge and that there's you know not a whole lot of reality to it because those shadows are not really all that is there in the world, so that's not really. It's a lower. It's a le, it's a lower level of knowledge. Is what I'm. Is what I'm, is what I'm trying to get. At. So then we have belief, which is a little bit higher. Then that's when a person is freed from that binding, and they can basically. Um, they can basically go up on that lower level of the cave and see those people that are mani that are manipulating the, the statues and also they, they can see the, see the fire and they're like oh well that 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 that's why I was seeing those 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 shadows and they're like oh there's there's a whole new reality here that I had no idea about you know um so it's just another level of more knowledge understanding understanding that there's there, that there's there's more reality than you know he than he thought beforehand um and he's confused. He's he's perplexed as to as to how did he not know about this prior to you know prior to him being freed. How you know how could there how could there be how could there be more reality, more things to know than what he already than, than what he than what he already knew. And this is this is the kind of theme um, that that comes until the till the very to the very end. Um, and leaving the visible realm. We have um, when the man is dragged out of is dragged out of the cave, um, and this is thought. When the man is dragged out of the cave, he sees the sun. He kind of understands that this the, that the sun is what gives light to, to everything else, and um, you know he's he's understanding higher levels of reality and new realities and like well he's also again he's confused and he's he's perplexed because there's another more much more reality than he ever thought so he's kind of like a little bit blinded by the light because this is more than more than more than, more than anything he's he's really ever seen you know um 
So he's kind of getting some uh, some bit of a feel for how you know how his previous life was was uh, was what it was. Um, and then as his eyes adjust, you know, he comes to have a better understanding of everything. And he understands, you know, just like you understand the, the sun, how it gives light to everything else, and that's the reason that we can see everything. That's the same, you know, reason how the, fo the form of the good, you know, is the reason that we can understand the form of beauty, or the form of roundness, or the form of redness, etc. Et um, and this is, under this is understanding. Um, this is the highest level of level of, of knowledge, um, and we. This is. This relates to the to the philosopher king issue, in that, the philosopher king, is the one who turns himself towards the form of of the good, and thus the rest of of the forms. And. The one the it's it's a it's an analogy of knowledge, and in, 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 in that the one who has been dragged out of that out of that cave and now has is is is, is adjusted and now understands how things are seen and all that and all that, and all, and all that stuff. That's the way guardians should be educated. Now guardians are educated for, you know, to um, not only to not only so that. The philosopher king, the philosopher king candidates can be picked from that crop, you know, um, but that's the guardians also have a job too. Um, and these philosopher kings are, um, they cannot once they turn themselves towards the form of the good, they are kind of basically having the most higher, the highest level of knowledge of really anybody. And, but the thing is that they can't stay, you know, they can't stay outside that cave, even the analogy, they have to go back in and rule those who are still in there. They have to rule those who are among the, le the lower levels of, of knowledge. And the, it's the king, the philosopher king, because... They have to rule those who who are of lesser knowledge. The well, one who has the higher level of knowledge is the one who has who has to rule. Um, and the cave re re represents four different ways of thought, um, four uh, different four different um, ways of thought that's kind of formed around what the person what the what the, what the person knows knows. Um, and the four ways of thought govern the way that you live your life. Then the way the things you know govern your thought and the, also the way you live. Um, and that's why a philosopher king is different from the auxiliaries and the guardians and the people who go, who go after luxury and desire and such. Um, and you know, I guess the way I see it, the philosopher king is looked at as a kind of a truth seeker, um, so that so that the good of the whole city or the whole republic can be sought after. And the the question then is, how do we select this philosopher king? How do we pick him out of the guardians? Well, because it is from the from the guardians that he is picked. Um, we, first of all, we turn people towards the right nature, uh, which, first of all, um, is to educate yourself, um, and that's to, um, people from a young age are taught things like math and, um, geometry and such, and, um, you know, and you have to, you have to enjoy what you're learning, so, in, 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 or, in order that you will apply yourself, you have to, um, be hardworking, you have to be, um, be hardworking, you have to be, you have to have courage, you have to be, you have to be stable individual, uh, you have to be, um, you have to have a good memory, you have to, um, be able to learn and such, um, 
that's kind of right nature, but the the right nature is, you know, be willing to learn in order that you might turn yourself towards the the the, the, the forms, because the forms, and ultimately and ultimately the form of the good is the where the the real knowledge is, and being of right nature is the is the potentiality to 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 uh, do so. Um, and learning should be something that the that the person likes to do, and that becomes a sort of um, playful thing because of how much the person would like it, and that's what the right nature would be characterized as. Um, and whoever does best among that, whoever whoever fits that profile the best becomes a guardian and those who don't become the um auxiliary the auxiliary which I've discussed in the other in the other videos. And the very, very, very best of those guardians, you know, is picked out one at a time to become a philosopher king. The very, very best of those um guardians. And the philosopher king is like I said, it's supposed to rule. To, it's supposed to rule. The, the, it's supposed to rule the cave. Um, you know, the cave, as in the people who are of lower um, viewpoints of reality, lower, um, lower uh, knowledge. And you know, the question is also asked. So, how do we start this thing? How do we get it going? And Socrates says, "Well." We go into a already established city, kick kick everyone out who is over who is over ten years of age, and train people who are ten years and under and, and, and under, um, you know, to be of this right nature, and um, create a social a social hierarchy based upon you know who does what, you know. Um, and, you know, I've talked about how, you know, I'm not really, you know, on board with this whole thing. And I don't think anybody today would be either. Because in a way it's um it's not it's not it's not it's not something that would that would fly here. But I think that uh that's a really nice um uh, and an analogy. Um l let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll probably be doing Eight, nine, and ten here, um, relatively soon.